There is no objective reality. This comes from the mind of the famous philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche, and this quote encapsulates the storytelling of Charlie Kaufman's I'm Thinking of Ending Things. If you are not familiar with Charlie Kaufman, he is a screenwriter and film director known for making films that generally astound or confuse people. One thing someone can never deny about his films are the themes and philosophies he presents in them. I Am Thinking of Ending Things is his most recent film. I've never experienced anything like it. I'm thinking of ending things. Huh? What? Did you say something? I don't think so. Weird. Upon rewatching it, I discovered that the film explored and deconstructed the concepts of perspectivism and care ethics. Perspectivism is rooted in interpretation. It rejects subjectivism and claims there is no equal truth because every person will perceive something differently. While care ethics is focused on how people respond and maintain relationships. All these concepts relating to the philosophies tie in with the main themes of the movie. Let's discuss by first introducing the characters. There is Lucy. The movie portrays her as the main character. She is intelligent, critical, thoughtful, but also self-doubting. She is in a relationship with Jake, who is our next character. I will coin her as a symbol of care ethics in the film. Jake is soft-spoken and generous. He is always deep in thought and always alluding to art and media. Jake represents both care ethics and perspectivism. There is also an old janitor character that the film cuts back to throughout the main story. He represents perspectivism, but we will talk more about him later. The driving force of this story, no pun intended, is the long car ride to Jake's childhood home and the ride back from his childhood home. During this long car ride, we discover how Jake and Lucy behave. They think and communicate very similarly. The only distinct difference being that Lucy is more pessimistic and critical compared to Jake. When Jake talks about the art he enjoys or his own personal life, he does it through a voice of appreciation and joy. When Lucy does the same, it is more critical. She doubts what she really knows. She consistently questions the truth of what she experiences. Now is probably a good time to drop a major spoiler. So, all throughout the movie, you are wondering why things are so weird. Why exactly Jake and Lucy behave the way they do? Why does it become a horror movie at the parents' house? And why do we keep cutting back to this old janitor? To simply put it, Jake and Lucy are not real. They are made up in the janitor's mind. In this movie, there's a lot of questioning what is real. And this is all done intentionally. What perspective are we supposed to believe? Can we believe anything of what we're seeing? To quote Ralph Duomal's 2020 article from the Pittsburgher, quote, Jake reminds the young woman that everything is tinged and that there is no objective reality. A remark primarily aimed at the audience whose window into janitor Jake's mind is an inherently subjective and consequently imperfect one. Close quote. While it is not confirmed by Charlie Kaufman, the writer, if this is true, that the characters are just a figment of the janitor's mind, I'm going to resort to one of my favorite YouTubers, YMS, or YourMovieSucks.org, in his analysis of the film to reveal this. Her backstory also changes throughout the film. At one point in the film, she says she needs to leave in the morning because of a paper she needs to write for school. And at another point in the film, she says she has to leave because she has a shift at a diner she works at. At points in the film, she says she grew up in a farmhouse. And at another point in the film, she says she grew up in an apartment. At one point, she's studying biology. And at another point, she's studying film. And at another point, she's studying physics. This constantly shifting character is the result of this janitor's fantasies. He is essentially testing the waters with hypothetical scenarios in his head. What would my parents think if I brought a girl home who was a painter? What would my parents think if I brought a girl home who was studying physics? This is the janitor trying to imagine several different versions of what could have been. At one point her accent changes and she suddenly has a cigarette. At another point she completely changes into the woman from the film the janitor was watching. Earlier in the film they mentioned that films can replace your thoughts like a virus. Everything wants to live, Jake. 
viruses are just one more example of everything. But... Even fake, crappy movie ideas want to live. Like, they grow in your brain. And they also call back to this virus line shortly after she transforms into the woman from the film. Pre-interpreted for us, and it infects our brains. We become it. Like a virus. On the surface, Jake represents the janitor at a younger age, and Lucy represents a lost romance he once had. The subtextual aspects of them relate to the janitor's pattern of thinking. One part of his brain is struggling to overcome the childhood trauma through escapism. Jake's decision to always talk about art rather than talk productively with Lucy reflects the janitor's real life. Jake is aware that he needs to not depend on a romantic interest and cannot run away from his problems, but he is unwilling to change. The horrors we see with his parents are told from a perspective where we are meant to feel that he is justified for his social and behavioral problems. It is meant to justify in the janitor's mind that he needs a romance to fill the void of proper nurture that he had been missing since childhood. As much as Jake slash the janitor wants to believe this and justify it from his perspective, he knows the truth. Lucy may in his mind be a kind and caring girlfriend, but she tells Jake the truth he does not want to hear. The janitor's fantasies, which are engulfed in media and film stereotypes. Did you say you loved me? I did. Idiot. It's consistently undermined by truth. Lucy, as stated before, represents a lost romance or a longing romance for the janitor. She is portrayed as a loving but critical thinking girlfriend, and the way this is often portrayed is with her being pessimistic or being cold towards Jake. Whenever Lucy, or rather this unattainable romantic interest in the janitor's mind, is being critical, it is always viewed as being a negative towards Jake. But keep in mind, both Jake and Lucy are in the janitor's brain. It is his perspective of the two, and his perspective of her growing more critical rather than more care-focused bothers him. Does this sound misogynistic to anyone else? Because, because it is. The janitor character, while we feel bad that he is alone and is suffering from depression, he has not done anything to fix who he is. He consumes art and media that portray these fantastical and often misogynistic tropes of romance as his escape. It engrosses him. Every time in his fantasy, he tries to escape from his perspective and focus more on the importance of a caring relationship, he circles back to the distorted view of love from the movies he watches. So, what is the janitor's story in this film? Why is he having this fantasy? The film is really about the janitor rationalizing if he should commit suicide. He depicts his fantasy relationship as a reason for what he can have, but then what pulls him closer to suicide is a realization he cannot have this. There is other symbolism in the film such as the ice cream stand, which reflects the janitor's lost friendships and difficulties in his youth. There's also a cartoon pig, but that's meant for a different video. If this video gets enough attention, I will make one video solely dedicated to the pig. All of these reasons adding up though, make the janitor believe that his only option is to end his life. By the end of the film, we see an overlap between Lucy and the janitor, both at the high school he works at. There's a blizzard outside, but it appears calm from inside the school. The final moments of this fantasy involve a dance and song reenactment from the musical Oklahoma, which is a show the janitor enjoys and witnesses the high school he works at perform. Jake performs a song, and Lucy watches in the audience. After this fantasy concludes, we see the janitor's car covered in snow from a blizzard. Is he in the car? Did he kill himself? This is now stripped away from the janitor's perspective and given to the audience. In my opinion, I believe the janitor did end his life for that mere fact. The perspective is now shifted. Lucy is portrayed as the main character in the fantasy, and to put her in the audience when Jake is singing symbolizes that she is now an audience member like us looking at what has occurred more objectively, because the janitor has killed himself. All rationale and care are gone, and he was his own worst enemy. 
This film tells a tragic story of the harms of believing in one objective-based reality. If people like the janitor focus on responsibility and care with the relationships they have, it promotes healthy and positive change. While the movie attempts to make it not one-sided of what's at fault, the upbringing versus the individual themselves, it is clear to me what writer Charlie Kaufman wanted to illustrate. A perspective devoid of care as their main virtue will never experience positive change. We're stationary and time passes through us, blowing like cold wind. Maybe this is how it was always going to end. That is my take on the philosophy behind I'm Thinking of Ending Things. Hope you guys enjoyed.